to the top. That's it. And here, you made a headline. What is up YouTube, Nick Morris here. Welcome to another episode of Tackle Tip Tuesdays. So today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make handlines. Not everybody has it in their budget to buy another set of small poles, or maybe room on your boat to bring a whole bunch of small poles. You know, in case you come across that bear pole that has small skipjack, aku, or small sheep inside. So I'm gonna show you how to make a, a pretty effective handline way a lot of this stuff can be actually made with stuff you have lying around if you already have fishing stuff lying around. So let me show you how to make it with this stuff right here. Here we go. So with a handline versus other methods, you have a bungee, okay? Red bungee, I think it's a 9 16 bungee. It's a softer bungee they have at the dive shops, okay? Most poles you have your drag. This is your drag right here, okay? So I got it cut to about a foot and a half. Also have some bloodline. You can use 550 cord, you can use rope, whatever you have around your house, okay? This is like 80 pound test or 90 pound test. So let me show you a real fast, effective, cost efficient way to make a handline. So we're gonna go with about, I don't know, three feet maybe. Now the good thing about this size diameter, if it's in the 1.9 crimps I already have, and I'll put links in my description to all this stuff right here. But like I said, a majority of you guys should have this kind of stuff laying around your house already, you know what I mean, if you're a fisherman. It's about a foot and a half, okay? We're gonna come down. Everybody's gonna be a little different, okay, depending on your setup, because this is gonna go to your cleat on your boat. So I'll say that's big enough for a cleat. We'll leave a little excess and I'll cut it. So there you go. So it's wearing a cleat, okay? Now this end, it's gonna be small, okay? I'll tell you, this whole loop is maybe the size of my finger. Right, so maybe it's an inch and a half tall loop, okay? When it's folded in half. So now we have this loop, okay? It's about a two feet long. This loop right here is probably about seven, eight inches. This long. I have about a foot gap, and I have about an inch and a half over here, okay? use whatever you have later on your house it's the same method just use whatever you have later on your house you don't have to go out there and spend a ton of money you know what I mean like this today for me all I have to buy is the bungee the bungee cost me seven dollars and and that's the only thing I really have to buy for this is the bungee I'm gonna crimp this 1.9 inch crimps and let's make this about eh, three feet or so Give some. Okay, this is the important part. You need to pay attention for this part, okay? So we have this, right? Like I said, this will go to our cleat. We'll level drop down. I have another loop here, okay? This loop right here. I went through this loop. See it? I went through this loop. Now I'm gonna come through right there. So it makes a knot like that. I still wanted to hop the other, and that's it, okay? Now this is the main purpose for this, okay? Where my cleat is on my boat, my cleat is lower. My cleat is up on top of my gunnel. I have to go through a hole through my gunnel and then come up. And that's why I made this link. For you, you know, your cleat might be on top, you can make this thing super short. You don't have to need all this excess. This is where the magic comes in. We have a surgical tubing, okay? This is dive tubing, it's red. Like I said, 9 16 You can get this at your local dive shop. It's gonna go right through there. We have our knot right here. Okay. We have our our loop and fire boat. And we have this coming down. Okay. Now the way this works is this knot has to go into here and I have to tie it. So we have this, this, and we have it right to there. If you guys remember what it looked like, right? right to there, okay? When we slide it up, when we slide it up, we're gonna tie our knot right here on top of this, okay? So let's put it back there again. So, yeah. And we're gonna tie our knot right here. So the way we're gonna tie this, okay, is we're gonna take our wax cord that we normally do for lures, right? We're about a one and a half foot length. We're gonna double it up now, okay? And we're gonna use a constrictor knot. If you can see, there's a little bulge you can see it, there's a little bulge right here. That's my knot, I wanna be in front of that knot, okay? 
so fucking strict or not, it's gonna be hard for me to describe it how. But I think you might be better off um, watching on YouTube. But now another thing you can do is you can burn your edges of this, which I'll probably burn. Okay. Like I said, this whole setup is about improvising with just what you have in your house. I'm having a hard time getting the crimson through there because my cord is all not completely straight. So we'll just tie it. Okay. Let's see. That'll hold. Now let's just pull this and get this in there. Okay. We already have this not already made, so we're gonna pull it. And we are done with this part. This, this is probably the hard part of the whole thing right here. With this kind of setup, you don't have reels that are break. This is your break right here. So this is only gonna stretch as far as the line in here is. Okay. So the way it works in fishing, most time it's just gonna be dangling, so it's kinda loose. When you get a fish, you'll see it like this, stretched all the way. So this step is done. Uh, something else you guys might wanna have to buy for some of you guys, or you can make one out of wood. I was looking for 80 pound test is what I was looking for. Unfortunately, I have no 80 pound test in a spool. I have a 120 pound test, which is fine. So I'll be using a 120 pound test to this swivel right here. I don't have crimps for it, so I'm just gonna tie it. I'll leave a little excess so I can burn it if I want it afterwards. If you haven't seen my other videos in the past, I'm marking lines and measuring distance, you can click right there and watch that after you're done watching this video. I'll show you how to mark lines. But I know the distance to my two long corners, okay? This will take the place of my two short, cor short corners. So if I come across like a bird pile with alcohols in it, I can bring my two short corners and put these out. And I don't have to worry about moving poles around or anything like that, because these will go right to my cleats. So let's make this one at 40 arm spans, okay? Okay, not 40. Let's make it at 38, because I have to forget my, two, my leader also. We're at 38. Okay, this is a little bit of a mess. Let me wind this up. So these are where these come in handy. I made it a little longer than shorter, okay? And the reason being is when I use it tomorrow, if it's too long, I can't adjust it. If I make it too short, I'm screwed. I have to tie blood knots and connect everything, which isn't fun. And I just tie it to a little swivel. Any kind of swivel. There's just something I literally had laying around. So, any swivel. So like I said, this is literally like a homeless fishing setup. Like whatever stuff you have near around the house, you can use, but you probably have to buy the bungee. Okay. There you go. So this is tied now. As you can see it. What I'm gonna use is 20 pound fluorocarbon. This is what I'll use. I'm gonna do a two, let's say two and a half arm lengths. Maybe three to be for good measure. We'll just say three. Plain pound test. Now this will work for like the rat akus and stuff. For a small akus and under 10 pounds, it should work. Anything over that, you, it might break. I mean, it is more for the small akus, skip jacks. Okay, so now we have that tied there. As you can see, I'm gonna wrap this around. I went to my friend on a Jerry Campania lure shop today. I was like, ah, what do you got for Aku? Show me what you got. So let me roll that clip of the shot. Okay, now for the bait for the hand lines, we're gonna try, uh, we'll do like a crack spoon on one, and we'll do a Campania lure rather. So I just shop at um, Hoi Self Storage in Pro City. And let's go see what Jerry has for us. I'll put links to his website down below and I'll put links to his IG also. So you have to push the buzzer to get in to Jerry's shop. We'll see who comes to the door. We'll see. Hey! When you come here, you have to follow the signs. Follow the signs. This is where the magic happens. Oh, 
I know a lot of you guys ask, what do you guys use for a pedal? This is the secret. Secret's already out there, all the Kai guys are using it. Blood worms. This stuff is candy. The only key I company lures, the only guys that make this stuff. Blood worm, I'm telling you. You're not seeing me use it yet, because it's not really old pedal time yet. But when the pedal comes around, this is what I will be using. Blood worms. The best, by far. So I'm getting a few things today for our hand line, okay? These and another paddle tail. We will see how they are. No idea. He's got other stuff. He's got other you stuff got too. Something coming for this guy. <laughs> right right All right. On. So a few of the ones Jerry gave me to try out. We'll try these out. We'll rig those with the hand line, and we'll try it this week. All right, everybody, here we go. Thanks, Jerry. No worries, bro. Anytime. Swing by, bro, Nick. Swing by. And for instance, I was there, and I was like, hey, do you have something this color? He's like, we'll make it one second. So he made me these, which is awesome. Awesome. This is like me and my dad. I was like, oh my god, he made me two of them. So I'm going to try to use this guy tomorrow, uh, but I'm not going to use that for the Aku. This is what I had in mind for the Aku tomorrow. Look at that. And I forget what he calls these, um, but he also makes a bigger paddle tail. The, he calls it the Mahi. It's a four inch one. I think this is a two inch one. I'm not sure the name. What he's been recommending for some of the guys is this hook with a lead so it swims upright. I think it might be too big for this, but honestly, we're gonna try it out just for fun tomorrow and we'll, we'll see. Uh, but, so the way it works is it goes in the tip and I'll, I'll put a link for these for these types of hooks in the description. I believe it's a four hook. It goes directly in the tip, okay? It winds in. Without trying to affect the eye too much. Give them the Wookiee eye. Okay. Right up the middle. So switch them upright. I don't know if this is gonna work. I think Mog is way too big for this stuff, but we will. I'll tell you what, we're gonna give it a try. If it doesn't work, we'll try something else. But I know this hook, I bought these hooks specifically for these. You find Shiba or something around, small, small like uh, baby elephants. This stuff with this is a no-brainer. It's, it's definitely a no-brainer. We'll try it with this tomorrow. I'm not 100% sure it's gonna work, but you know what? We're fishing tomorrow. And we're gonna give it a try. Actually, we're fishing today. If you're watching this video, I upload it while I'm fishing on the boat right now. <laughs> All right. Oh my God, two hands look magical. So with this weight, it actually swims upright and I should have paddle tail give enough action. I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, this was made for this. If you can see that, oh my God, that is, this might be a little too small, but you know what? Yeah, I'll give it a try, okay? Wrap around, go around your hook to the top. That's it. 